Hey guys, Alex here, AJNashville.com. Got my buddy Brett here, Mr. German Motor Works. Um, so happy you made it. I know it's it's Friday. It's a little bit later in the day. Most of you guys won't hear this till Monday. How was the traffic on the way here, man? Man, it was pretty rough. Pretty was rough. It? Was yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. Slow. Gotta yeah. love 440. Yeah. Hopefully 440. one of these days they'll fix that up. And, and you're driving here in a, a semi-tuned BMW, so that kind of took some of the, the fun away. But you've got a, what, an M3? I do have an M3. Yeah, so that's nothing. <laughs> They're not even on the same level. But... Um, so we're here to talk a little bit about your business. So how did, where did the name German Motor Works come from? And so my business partner and I, um, you know, we were kind of brainstorming, trying to get a business going. Mm-hmm. And uh, believe it or not, picking out a name was, was incredibly difficult. Right. Um, you know, you never want to pigeonhole yourself into, you know, how we only work on, you know, a certain brand or only a certain make because mm-hmm. um, we don't. And, uh, you know, it, it was just one day we kind of just started bouncing names off of each other and we text back and forth and, hey, what do you think about this? What do you right. think about that? And I don't know. We just kind of kind of got kinda there. It, I, I'll tell you this. Your guys' logo is sick. You're, I saw the logo on your car, actually, and I'm like, I have to have Thanks two so. of those, one on each side. There you go. And actually, when I do presentations, when I talk about branding, your logo is one of the slides that I use on every single presentation because it, it integrates the gear that most of us know is is some sort of gear within the motor or transmission or something like that even if you're not a gearhead you could recognize that that is a gear yeah and then the colors represent the colors of the m series bmws and then you have the the german motor works which is all integrated i have asked groups of people you know we'll have 40 people in the classroom i'll say hey do you know what this stands for and multiple people will be like yeah they work on german cars how'd you know that the colors the, the everything so you guys picked an awesome logo. That's sick, dude. Thanks, brother. I appreciate that. Um, okay, so German Motor Works. You guys work on, obviously, BMWs. What about Mercedes, Audis? Yeah, so we specialize in BMWs. Uh, we do work on Audis, uh, Porsches, Mercedes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, some Lambos in yeah, there. I saw yeah, some Lambos. Yeah, yeah, we do exotics. Yeah. Um, you know, we're one of the only people in the state of Tennessee with the factory Lamborghini diagnostic equipment. Wow. Um, factory Porsche equipment, factory Jesus. Mercedes equipment, and factory BMW equipment. Right. Um, so we've uh, we've certainly started working on a lot more exotics. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're a good bit of fun. The Italian cars are pretty fun. Right. <laughs> now they have small compartments for small hands. Because you're a pretty big dude. You're you're close. You're not as big in the belly as me, but you're close to my size. Man. Uh, yeah, they're, they're not super easy. Um, they're, they're pretty tight. My yeah. business partner, Jonathan, uh, he's even bigger than both of us. He's, <laughs> he's like 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, Jesus. 3-something. So does he just pick the cars up and you guys roll up underneath of there, do the work, and he'll set it back down? You not, know, there, there, there's there's some days you know we get we get a little uh, you know stressed out, but uh, yeah. never seen that happen yet. <laughs> right, you never know. So um, obviously, German cars, Italian cars, just about anything high end is what you're working on. Right, right, high end. Uh, BMWs. There's that that thought out there that BMWs maintenance is just out of this world, expensive, expensive. And I'll tell you from personal experience. I don't believe it's expensive. I don't think it's cheap. It's not a Toyota oil change, but I pay $89 to have my truck's oil change mm-hmm. and 110 to have full synthetic on a BMW. So they're not far apart. And if you can't afford to maintain a vehicle, whether it's a BMW or a Ford Focus, you shouldn't purchase that. Right. But do you think for the quality and everything that you get that the maintenance is out of line on those? I think that maintenance on any European car uh, is not cheap. Right. Um, I think some of it is relevant to you know the price of the car. Mm-hmm. Um, generally, the more expensive the car, the more expensive it is to maintain. Right. Um, one of the things we try and do at German Motor Works is to you know make take a little bit of that sticker shock off of people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, we believe in being proactive on maintenance to try and maybe take away some of those surprises uh, yeah. that that people the coil packs. may come across um, right. you know being proactive is always a good thing yep. uh, especially with you know the german cars and exotics mm-hmm. so um, and they're not cheap by any means to maintain right uh, but i don't think they're as bad as what a lot of people think they are well and i think too if you buy a you know bmws they range from what what would you say 40 grand on up 40 grand for maybe a base model brand new BMW 3 Series? So you can actually buy a base model. I know like a 320, they're in the low 30s. Okay. Um, And I want to say like a 228, uh, maybe even an X1 would be even cheaper than that. Right. Um, You know, and and so you can get them fairly inexpensive. Mm -hmm. Um, 
you know, but a lot of times what happens with, with customers is, you know, maybe they're taking them, their car somewhere that maybe doesn't have the skill set, maybe isn't, maybe doesn't think that way and being proactive. And right. um, we've even seen, you know, some places maybe pick and choose kind of what they tell their customers is going on with their cars. Mm-hmm. Um, and we kind of believe that if you're not educated on where your car is and where it needs to be, um, you know, that's that's not fair to you. You can't right. make, you know, educated financial decisions based on your vehicle, which most people use to commute to work basis. and, and yeah. you know, earn their livelihood. livelihood. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, we try and educate our customers so that maybe the, the process isn't as painful as, as maybe it's been in the past for them. Right. Well, that's one of the things I've experienced is, you know, if there's an issue, it, even when my, my uh, injector blew out, mm-hmm. it went to you before it went to BMW. Why? Because I wanted to make sure that the people I trusted diagnosed my vehicle for the repair that was needed. Mm-hmm. Now, that was a warranty thing. That, so that's why BMW handled it and said to you guys, had it not been a warranty, obviously, you guys would have taken care of it. Sure. You guys do all the maintenance on my vehicle uh, because there's a trust level there. Sure. I know there's no flim flamming. Hey, you know what? This will get you by for a little while or hey, let's replace this and it doesn't really need to be replaced. And I feel like trust is a big thing when it comes to any type of any type of large ticket item sale, whether it be a performance thing, a maintenance thing, anything. Trust is key. Um, and I feel like that's what you guys really strive for. You, Like you said, you educate. You say, hey, this is what it is. Here's what it'll do. There was a part yesterday you and I talked about. The other part was slightly more expensive, but I asked you, is there a difference? And you, you responded honestly. And we chose to go with the, the different part, you know? And, and that's not something most companies do because there's larger margins in aftermarket stuff right. than there is in, in OEM stuff, you know? Um, and I think that's something admirable about your company is that's what you guys stand for, you know? And, and going there and seeing it in person, there's a lot of cars there. That means there's a lot of people that trust you you know, to, to work on their stuff. A lot of people highly recommended you when I said, Hey, where's a good BMW mechanic? Your name popped up half a dozen times by people that I know personally that I trust as well. So that says a lot about your business ethic and your growth and everything else. So right now you're in a, in a position, I understand you guys are potentially looking to move to a more convenient position at some point. Yeah, we need a lot more space. Um, you know, Obviously, we've been growing quite a bit. We've been around for a little over two years now. Uh, mm-hmm. October of 15 um, is when we started. And so we've, we've been around for a little bit, and things have really taken off. And mm-hmm. We've hired some, some great, great, great technicians. And, um, you know, everything has been great, but finding a, a larger spot in Nashville has been a little little troubling. Right. Um, expensive. You know, it's, it is expensive, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it's tough to find... You know, we need a lot of, of space and parking to go with it because we do have a lot of cars in-house. Yeah. Um, so finding a, a good balance of the two mm-hmm. uh, has proven to be pretty difficult. So now, maintenance-wise, I know you guys do performance-type stuff. We do. OEM-type stuff. Let's say that I'm, I'm driving down the road and uh, I don't even know what OEM could go out because I haven't experienced a bunch of that yet. But let's say that... Something in my dash goes out. It needs mm-hmm. to be replaced. Can I bring it to you guys to replace it? Anything. Okay. Anything. Awesome. Fact. All of us are factory trained technicians. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and so my my business partner and I, when we started the business, um, his name's Jonathan, and uh, when we started the business. Our biggest thing was, you know, look, we're not trying to be like everybody else. We're not trying to overcharge for stuff. We're trying to add a value. Right. To owning a vehicle. It doesn't matter if it's a BMW or a Porsche. I don't care if it's an M3 mm-hmm. or a base model 3 series. Same thing you know, goes I don't, into it. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Right. You need to be an educated customer. If you have questions, I'm there to answer them. That's what both of us strive to do. We yep. strive to build a relationship with our customers because, you know, look, we want to help you own your vehicle. We want to help you buy your next vehicle when you're tired mm-hmm. of that one. Maybe that one gets higher mileage, you know, stuff you don't want to fix, whatever. Um, you know, we want to try and steer you in a direction that, you know, you can have fun because I don't necessarily believe that a car should just be a means of transportation. Right. You know, it's, it's really a reflection for a lot of people of their personality, of, of where they're trying to, you know, get to, or, or mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's a lot of people's, you know, toy too. A lot of people, we do a lot of, of track stuff and performance right. work, you know, but at the end of the day, um, you know, we treat people who do track stuff the same as you know somebody who just needs an oil change yeah well and and 
I can't afford the track stuff. Let's face that. <laughs> Break too much stuff. But, you know, like you said, it's a reflection upon me. You know, I bought the vehicle, and you saw it when it was bone stock when I bought it back at the end of August. Um, and it's really turned into, I mean, you've seen my truck out front. Yeah. You can see there's a lot of similarities between the styles. You know, they obviously one's a car, one's a truck, but it's a way, it's, I think car people have a different expression when it comes to the way their vehicle looks. And not everyone. I mean, Jim, you're the, the, the millennials here, guys. Mm -hmm. But, um, Jim, you're one of the people that can care less what you drive. But you've driven my BMW while I was out of town. I yeah. mean, is it different for you? I mean, yeah, it's definitely nicer. It's more comfortable. But, I mean, I don't care too much about what I'm planning to get next. I don't jump into it. I don't get a new vehicle every year or anything like that because it's just not that important to me right, right now. So. But a nice-looking car is something you take notice to. Oh, yeah, of course. Right. right. And that's the thing. You know, once again, it's not for everybody. You're not everybody's cup of tea, which that's okay. And, and what I really think you did that's admirable about what you've done with your business is you didn't say, hey, we only do these. But just like myself, with me focusing on, focusing on veteran loans, mm -hmm. you say, this is my consumer, this is my client, this is who I like to work with. Now, if a Ford Focus came in there, you know how to change the plugs, you know how to change the oil, you know how to do all that stuff. Excuse me, it's not going to be as easy for you than if a 535 pulled in there, but you know how to do the basic stuff, just like I know how to do other types of loan. But I have a particular client that I work better with, right. and that's something that sounds like you guys actually got a chance to focus on, which is... It's well, a good thing. So I really believe that this industry in general, I mean, look, let's face it, the automotive industry, you know, it's got some, some negative, you know, maybe uh, a, a lot of people have not a lot of negative views on the automotive industry. You mm -hmm. know, people feel like, you know, whenever they're going to go to the dealer or even, you know, even independence, right. you know, they, they feel, you know, it goes back to trust too. They, they feel like maybe, you know, somebody's going to pull one over on them or, mm -hmm. or whatever. And, you know, we're real, really big on, you know, I may not know or I may not want to take on change the spark plugs and a focus. Right. But if you call my shop, I mean, I'm going to try and shoot you in the right direction. I mean, mm -hmm. and I have relationships all over Nashville. Right. You know, really in, in other states too, you know, to help people, you know, get things accomplished. And, and it's been great building relationships with, you know, other businesses that are awesome. We kind of all feed off of each other. There's, there's plenty of other stuff that maybe, you know, we don't necessarily get into, Mm -hmm. um, you know, like we'll work on Audis and, and Volkswagens here and there, but I'm not a Volkswagen Audi specialist. Right. I'm just right. not. So if there's stuff that's maybe above what we really want to take on or we're comfortable with, I'm not afraid to, to, to tell people, right. look, right. like right. I'm not servicing you the best that I can right. because I don't know how to do that. Or we, you know, we're not equipped to accomplish that. I'm not going to try and flail around and, and try and make it happen. I'll steer you to somebody that mm -hmm. I know can take care of you better than I can. Yeah, and that's that's awesome that you do that. That's something similar. You know, if you come to me and you want a bond loan, I don't do those. I've got somebody that does. You know, and I'll send you to them. It's a person I trust, a person that I can deal with because you trust me. Right. Maybe when you do buy something different, then I can help you. Um, okay, so as a business owner, we know that you didn't wake up one morning and say, okay, I'm going to start a business. Boom, you started one. All of a sudden, there's lifts and there's cars and there's everybody and there's people driving in. What were one of your difficulties when you first opened the business that you found was a hurdle that took some effort to get over. Man, so finding the the first location for us was pretty simple. Um, we actually bought uh, some equipment from an existing shop and kind mm -hmm. of, of, you know, updated a lot of things, added our own equipment. Um, but so that was pretty easy. Um, a lot of the paperwork associated with starting the business and getting all that stuff settled and right, and you yep. know, opening the right bank accounts and, and that type of stuff. Um, it, it was it was tough, you know, because I don't have a business background. I don't have an entrepreneur background. You know, my family, um, even Jonathan, same. You know, pretty similar. Like, you know, we didn't really grow up around a ton of that. Um, mm -hmm. Jonathan's dad, you know, owned his own shop at one point too. But right. you know, we. Um, we kind of pulled around from some other people that we knew who already owned businesses and, you know, kind of, kind of a big group effort, but mm -hmm. it was, it was tough getting all that paperwork stuff figured out and then, you know, getting social media going and, and just trying to get our name out there. Um, you know, you we don't, kill it on we don't do any advertising <laughs> right. at all. You know, I don't, I don't really do any paid stuff short of just using social media. You know, mm -hmm. we do some, some charity events and stuff like that. Um, which, you know, we do more for fun and to, to obviously help people out than anything Just else. Back, but, yeah. um, you know, cause giving back is pretty awesome. Um, but you know, getting social media going and, and thankfully for us, we work on a lot of cool stuff 
mm-hmm. and that makes it pretty easy to take pictures of things and document right. it and post it on the internet. You know, it's it's not too bad, um, but it's tough to, to manage everything. Time mm-hmm. management stuff. You know, we're we started out just Jonathan and myself, and from day one, thankfully, I mean, we've been real busy and slammed, and, right? And just trying to manage, you know, our time and, and mm-hmm. customer expectations. Sometimes it's hard because. Neither of us want to say no. We're we're not we're not in the business of saying no to people. Right. Um, you know, right. people have emergencies, and um, you know, your your car is your life. You know, mm-hmm. you can't get to pick your kids up. You can't get to work. You can't you know get to yeah, the store. Yeah, you're losing money. you yeah. right. You know, you're having to pay Ubers, or you know, you're having to rent a car or whatever. Yeah. That's tough. You know, and so we we don't like saying no to people, and we don't you know we don't like uh, you know going through that whole conversation, mm-hmm. but. You know, so sometimes, you know, biting off a little bit more than what we would like to be able to chew right. is a little difficult. Well, and that, that goes into growth, too. That allows you to expand. And, and you know, you're right. Like social media, Instagram, you guys murder it on there. Every time I get on Instagram, it's like boom, boom, boom. And I'm looking at these cars, I'm like, wow. You know, now granted, a lot of the vehicles we, we are fortunate enough to see around this area, you know. Um, but for most people that don't see exotic vehicles a lot that's a strong following you know to get on there and see something like a ferrari a lambo a bentley a even a bmw you know a lot of people don't get to see those on a regular basis so the fact that you guys document that creates a strong following which creates word of mouth you know like i said a lot of people that i know my buddy ben um he sold bmws forever you know and and he was one of the guys i recommended you yeah well, no, he's, man. Yeah. yeah ben's awesome so you know, that says a lot about the quality of work. Because the thing is, is a bad story would be told a million times, a great story would be told once, you mm-hmm. know. It's unfortunate, but it's the way our society works. The other thing is, too, you know, there's so many similarities. You, Rich from the Rap Lab, um, John and Brandon from Twine, Dustin Black from Black Tie. You know, you guys all have the same mentality as far as work, 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 grind, 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 build, build, build. You know, Twine just expanded. Yep. Uh, Dustin Black is is now doing franchising with Black Tie Movers. Um, Rich has got some new employees that started with him. You know, it's it's all about you get in there, you pigeonhole yourself into a position where you're actually expanding above and beyond what you what you thought. Did you ever think that you would have other employees working with you guys this soon in the game? God, no. Right. No, man, it's been crazy. I mean, we're blessed uh, beyond belief. You know, it's it's really wild to see. You know, the, the goals that we set out for ourselves when we first started and, and you know, not really knowing what to expect because, mm-hmm. you know, for a while, you know, I'd been doing side work and, and kind of doing some moonlighting and building clientele and Jonathan, um, you know, had kind of been doing his own thing for a little while and building clientele and, and we kind right. of merged both and, you know, you never know how things are going to turn out when you take, you know, a bunch of stuff, put it together and, and, you know, kind of throw it at a wall and see what sticks. And don't get me wrong. I mean, we had an educated thought process to all of it. And, yeah. And we work really well with each other. Um, and then, you know, just everything has kind of worked out amazing. And, and it's a risk. You know, you, you guys started your own company with nobody standing in line saying, hey, work on my car, you know. Um, and, and that's a huge risk. Most people, unfortunately, most people won't take that risk because they have a family to support. They want to make sure that, you know, the the 1st and the 15th, they get a paycheck. And so taking that risk, I'm sure, was something scary for yourself and your family, right? Your, your wife has it been was. with you since day one on this? It was. Yeah, it was It was pretty difficult, you know, because anytime you step out of that, that box, you know, you, you take a leap of faith and, mm-hmm. you know, you hope that everything works out. And for us, you know, everything thus far has and and everything's been going great but you know we put in a ton of work you know when we first opened for sure I mean Jonathan and I were both there you know there was nights we were there till 10 30 11 o'clock at night midnight sometimes just just (laughs) grinding that out yeah Yeah. I mean you know we get there early we stay late you Mm -hmm. know the work is done when the work is done and you know at the end of the day um you know in this day and age look you know if you own a business and you're punching a clock right you know you're not hitting everything that you can. You're you're not you're leaving a lot on the table, and, yep. and you need to grind because there's somebody else out there who's gonna grind harder than you are. You are exactly. And, you know. First one in, last one out. You know that's when you're building an empire. That I agree with you 100. percent You have to be the person that puts in the work. You know now in 10, 15 years when everything's actually built up and going on your own, you don't have to worry about that as much. You know you can relax a little bit and enjoy the time with the family and everything else, but. 
I think I texted you one time. I was dropping my car off to you, and I said, well, hey, how if I just drop it off in the morning? What time do you leave? And you're like, 5.30. I'm like, yep, taking it to you tonight. <laughs> I don't do the 5.00. I'm, I'm a I'll morning be, person. I'm right. a morning person. I'll be up in the morning, but I'm not driving my car. You know, you live a few miles away from me, but I'm not driving my car over to your place at 4.30, 5.30 in the morning to get it to you on time. You know, but and, and I'm fortunate in that aspect that I'm able to – have you that close to where I can, hey, let me drop it off and, and do that, you know? So the service is impeccable always. But, you know, when building an empire and doing things like that, you really just have to put in the work, put in the grind and do what you have to do, put the hours in. And you need to have a supportive spouse that's there that, hey, it's okay, you know? Oh, yeah. And yeah. that's that's that speaks volumes for your wife. You know, yeah. the fact that she's accepting and says, hey, you know what? Go do your thing because it's what's best for us. That, that says a lot, you know? Yeah, both, both of our wives... Uh, you know, really put up with a lot. We're we're both workaholics, Jonathan and I. Yeah. And uh, gosh, without without our wives taking care of things, you know that they do and, and mm-hmm. putting up with all of it. You know, it's 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 a lot of stress. I'm in your own business. I don't I don't care who it is. If 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 you say it's easy, I don't know what you're, you're doing. Full of it. Yeah. But, but, you know, either you're you're not telling the truth, or you got you know something I don't. If it's easy, you haven't grown to your full potential. You know, because let's face it, what I do could be easy. If I was closing two, three loans a month, that's easy, you know, but I, I, I can't get what I want off two, three loans a month. If you were doing just tune-ups, just spark plugs and doing that day in and day out for 28 days out of the month or not even 28, 14 days out of the month, you know, that's easy. And so, yes, in that, that standpoint, it is easy, but building a successful business that's going to allow you to provide for your wife, you know, and, and allow Jonathan to provide for his family, um, that's not easy because let's face it, you know, I'm in the same situation, man. I don't know about yours, but mine's very high maintenance. She wants to drive a brand new car. She wants a brand new purse. You know, my children, they're, they're high maintenance. So that doesn't come easy, you know, to have an attractive woman, you got to do a lot of attractive things, which is make good money and be a hard worker. <laughs> See, I think uh, I'm the expensive one in my relationship. Well, I think that BMW sitting in your garage, you know. Man, yeah, yeah, but you know, at the end of the day, the other thing too is, you know, you got to kind of do your own thing. Yeah. Like, you know, entrepreneurship and, and business ownership, it's not for everybody. Right. Um, you know, it, it's cool to say, you know, look, you know, we did this, but the, the, the tough part about owning a business is it's not really what you did today, it's what you're going to do next week, next month, next yep. year. Yep. And just keep it rolling. And so we have, uh, we have a lot of big things plans just trying to grow trying to mm-hmm. trying to offer our customers a better experience a better service right you know right. And, and just keep keep bringing everything top notch yeah and that's that's what's important that constant growth you know it's the same for my industry i am working on my closings for april right now you know march and may they're they're kind of already spoken for if i don't have contracts in right now for those months then then i'm not doing it you know so um I, I said May. I shouldn't have said May. March is spoken for. April is the next. You know, because we're 45 days out. Okay. And that goes the same for you guys to a certain degree that, you know, if you look at, okay, this is what's on the schedule for today. Well, what's feeding you guys tomorrow? You know? And that's something that a lot of people miss. They think it's just, okay, today's grind. Um, a old manager used to say, what have you done for me lately? And the meaning behind that, obviously, is, okay, you did your work yesterday. But what would you do today? What would you do to improve your life today? And I think that's something that a lot of people lose focus on. They say, well, yesterday was an awesome day for me. I closed a lot of deals. I worked on a lot of cars. I did this, but you haven't done shit for today. And mind you, I use foul language every now and then. But I I try to steer away when I have guests on here because, you know, you're never done. But you may have some listeners that are like, oh, my God, he said shit. (laughs) But, uh, you know, that's that's a big thing. And, And knowing what you have coming down the pipe. And also not growing too fast. I see a lot of people that are starting a business and they, I almost made this mistake when I opened up this office. And what I mean by that is the first retail location I looked at was 3,000 square feet. It was an awesome office. I wanted these computers, this, this, and this. And luckily I had a great mentor that, that's my, my buddy Johnny Fowler. He took me back and said, hey, are you sure you want this? Because here's what it is. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, it's all going to run me into a big debt in the beginning and I'm going to have to dig my way out as it gets deeper. So knowing that balance and getting by with what you can get by on for the time being is a, a lifesaver when it comes to starting your own business. Um, taxes and all the other stuff, you know, if you're paying a lot of money in taxes, I see people this time of year all the time like, oh my God, you know, my tax return was zero dollars. It's like, good. You didn't give the government a tax-free loan all year long. 
But business owners don't get to complain <laughs> about that because what are we doing? Paying We're paying in, in man. <laughs> exactly. Paying in. And you got to have that money sitting aside because when it comes time to pay, Uncle Sam doesn't play. He yeah. says, look, I want my money now. Yeah, there's no um, choice. Exactly. And you probably pay quarterly taxes too yeah. for uh, state taxes, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Quarterly. So you have taxes there as well. And so part of that becomes the responsibility. And here's the thing. I would bet money I could blindfold you and you could work on a piece of a car and do it efficiently. Mm-hmm. How are you at uh, accounting? Is that oh, something? Man. So you did you hire out to get an so, accountant? So uh, Jonathan's, uh, our, our accounting stuff is, we, we do hire that out. But even mm-hmm. just our bookkeeping and, and just, you know, basic, you know, keeping Jonathan and I in, in order. Jonathan's wife uh, comes into the shop a couple days a week and, Keeps the bank account straight, keeps yep. the, the credit card stuff paid, takes care of all that kind of stuff because, yeah. you know, it's just a lot of that stuff, when you start getting busy, you start forgetting things and right. that's the type of stuff that'll burn you. That's, oh yeah, that's, stuff sits on the shelf. Somebody ordered a $800 intercooler and it sat on the shelf for six weeks and now nobody wants it and you're stuck with it. You yep. can't send it back to the distribution company because you went outside your timeline or whatever it is. Or if you do, you pay a restocking fee and a shipping fee. Now you lost money on something you're supposed to make money on. Um, yeah, it's tough. She keeps us in line. She's yeah. uh, she's really particular about things, and uh, I'm pretty terrible about being really particular <laughs> about receipts or really right. anything like that. So, so you need to have like a what I have is my assistant. We get done with something, I hand him the receipt. But what I used to do is a Manila envelope, slide it in there. I get done, I got receipts in my pocket, slide them in, stick them back in the drawer, and that was an easy way to do it. But the reason why I bring that up is we're not experts at everything. Nope. You know, there's a lot of stuff I'm not great at. My P and L when my when my lady Jeannie when she sends it over, I look at it and it's like reading Spanish. I'm like, I have no idea what I'm looking at. As long as this number here looks good, we're good. Um, and so my point behind that is hire out people that are efficient at doing some of the things you're not efficient at. Because if you had to sit there between you and Jonathan and manage the books and make sure the bank accounts and everything were straight. That would be less time you could spend making money or doing the activities that make you profitable. Well, it's just a lot more stress too. You right. know, stress, stress is probably the biggest thing. Time is one mm-hmm. thing, you know, but mm-hmm. but stress, you know, if you're not good at it, you know, find somebody who is. Yep. You and know. you got payrolls to worry about, you know, and and I'm sure you're like I am. So when I come to sit down at my desk, it's not for me. It's not for my kids. It's not for anybody else but my employees. I'm responsible to make sure the millennial has a paycheck. I'm responsible to make sure my buddy Jeff gets paid. I'm responsible to make sure Tiffany gets her paycheck, which is my processor. I'm responsible for my underwriter to get paid. And what I mean by that isn't, I'm, it's not just that I'm responsible to make sure they get a check, but make sure we have the business coming in the door to make that check happen. And I think that's a burden we take on ourselves as business owners is it's not just us, it's the people around us that we're fortunate enough to employ and to grow with, you know? Yeah, one thing that's been really cool is hiring employees, uh, which in, in our case, um, we have two uh, b and master technicians who work for us, uh, mm-hmm. Dave and Max, and uh, Max was our first employee. And uh, man, it, it's been really cool uh, having that experience and really bringing them on board and knowing uh, the environment that each of them came out of and what was good and bad about their previous work experiences and things like that. Right. And really trying to create an environment that they will do really well in, you mm-hmm. know, to, to not have to, I don't know how many people know this, but in the automotive world, most of the guys, technicians are paid flat rate. Um, so, you know, if you're just standing there doing nothing, you're not making any money. Right, right. So that can be pretty stressful. Um, thankfully here in Nashville, uh, all of us worked for the B&A dealership. And so, they were always pretty busy, mm-hmm. so we really, you know, never had to really worry too much about turning hours and making money and that type of stuff. Right. But that doesn't mean it's not stressful. And so, you know, dealing with some of the paperwork and that type of stuff. I mean, I, I knew what what people didn't like. So it's it's pretty easy to create an environment that people flourish in when you know what not to do. Yeah. And so it's been really cool to see them grow and and continue for us to strive to try and make a, a better work environment and make mm-hmm. things better for them because you know having employees and watching them you know do well and, and watching them prosper watching their families do well and, and everything has right. been really cool and something that going into it I, I never really thought about it, mm-hmm. it really wasn't something that crossed my mind yeah it's it's a thought that I think when we're on the entry level of stuff like that you don't realize that hey I'm responsible for putting food on their table I'm responsible in part for the home they just bought I'm responsible for the new car they just bought you know and 
And like you said, you don't – Johnny Fowler, my, my – um, he's a senior vice president of my company, but he's also the – one of my close friends. He always says never put a cart behind a racehorse. Right. You know, and, and that goes back to what you're talking about with the paperwork and stuff like that. If you got a man that – man or woman that could do a repair – just like that, but they take an hour and a half to do the paperwork. Guess who should probably do that paperwork? Somebody that's really good at paperwork, right. you know, because let your workhorse do the things that they're best at and then hire out or, or outsource somebody that's good at the other portions of it. Right. You know, that, that goes big. So with my business, you know, all I do is build relationships, make sure clients are taken care of, make sure realtors are happy and everything else. And then Jeff, and I'm very fortunate to have Jeff, um, he takes care of all the other stuff. You know, the paperwork, the emails, the documents, stuff like that, because I'm not good at it. Organizing, dude, I got file drawers right here that have nothing in them. Like, I think there's some pens in this one, you know. They look clean, though. Right, exactly. That's, I wipe them down all the time. That's what I do. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it goes to show that you guys have something good going for yourselves. You spend a lot of time at cars and coffee and stuff like that, right? So you're yeah. intermingling with these people. I'm sure a lot of your techs and i know people don't like to be called mechanics because anymore mechanics aren't what they used to be it's a lot of right. techno technology stuff but those guys have interest and those girls have interest in vehicles so it makes it really a really fun environment you know when you enjoy what you do it is it's really fun building relationships with people you yeah. know and and trying to steer them and, and and show them things that maybe they didn't know that their vehicles could do or, you know, it goes really, fast. right. And, and, yeah. <laughs> Not yeah, that anybody yeah, would yeah. ever do that, you know, yeah. but I was in Mexico one time with my car and it was, it was quick. <laughs> Mexico is a good place to go. <laughs> right, <exactly. laughs> so, you know, but, but, uh, but having that trust and knowing those things, you know, just like, uh, I was looking at, at the end of the year, I want to get an M6, but then I talked to a buddy of mine and he's like, have you ever seen the B6? And I'm like, I have no idea what that is. I've never heard of it. B6 Alpina. Yeah. So the, the thought of going that direction is something that rang, you know, instead of getting the M6, well, maybe the B6 is, is something more of what I'm looking for. But the educational side, once again, you know, that's, that's what creates raving fans. And that's why you have people when someone says, hey, my BMW is doing this. And I use BMW because that's that's commonplace with me. Sure. And that's what I see. When they say it, they say, talk to Brett, talk to Brett. German Motor Works, talk to Brett. Talk, you know, and, and it's because people trust that you'll educate. You'll know what you're you, – they know that you know what you're doing. Um, and you, it's just a source that you can go to and you're not going to get your head ripped off. Every, things cost money. Let's, let's be clear about that. Nothing's cheap. Nothing's free. Things cost money, but if you can take it to somebody that's going to save you a little bit of cash, it's a little bit more cash that you save this time around. So, um, any final words or anything? I've, I've kept you here for a long time, man. It's Friday. You should have had a Dos Equis or something by now. <laughs> no, nah, brother. I really appreciate you guys having us on here. Uh, yes, sir. It's great to, to chat with you guys. Um, you know, let us know. Anybody out there, anything German Motor Works can do for you, let how us can know. I, how can I reach you? If I, if I was a guy that needed some work done... Do you have a phone number, an email address, a website? Yeah, 615-383-3361. Give us a call. Check us out. Facebook, Instagram, all that jazz. German Motor Works, GMW awesome. Nashville. Awesome, awesome. All right, cool, man. Well, hey, thank you so much for coming out. Um, guys, those of you that are listening, look for our show also on Friday at 5 o'clock. Uh, it's going to be a great show. It's something definitely to look forward to. I'm not going to spill the beans on it, but we'll talk about that on Friday. So thanks for tuning in.